Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at this starter capacitor for an HVAC system. This thing has actually failed and I was gonna open it up and see what we can see inside and see if there's any uh, obvious reason why it failed. If it's just the capacitor actually went bad or if there's something wrong with some of the components inside here. You get surprised when you get home and your air conditioner is not working and it's uh, you know 90 degrees in your house. And if it's not a problem with charge in the air conditioner, so you open it up, you see that there's no overpressure or underpressure warning light there's a good chance that the problem has actually come from one of these. There are multiple capacitors in your unit and as they show on their little diagram right here, you have your run capacitor and your start capacitor. So this is designed, as it says right on the front, relay and hard start capacitor with the big kick. And what they mean by that is this thing basically bumped the unit to, to get the thing, the motor, the compressor motor to start spinning. So without this piece, the compressor will never spin. It'll just sit there and consume a ton of current and then not actually work correctly. What these are for is, you know, for a single phase system to basically kick the unit to get it to start to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack this thing open. I'm gonna assume it's gonna come apart real easy. There's a couple little pieces of metal in here. So this is just a regular capacitor. This is an off the shelf capacitor. So I'm guessing, guessing we can just peel this label off and it'll have some specifications on there somewhere. You can see that it's got a pressure relief valve on the top here and that has not popped, so that's a good thing. All right, so one of the wires just connects directly to the capacitor. The other wire goes through this little box right here. All right, so this little component right here is doing all the magic. So this is what actually disconnects the unit. So I'm gonna pop this thing open. We'll take a look at what's inside here. It's just a metal plate, a metal plate, and then this guy in the middle. This does have some writing on it. So this thing says three, ORJD135. And this looks like a positive temperature coefficient device. So it's not really a relay. And if this is what failed, then this, this device would never be able to connect. If it's actually the capacitor that failed, then this device may have already been at high resistance, so this wouldn't work. So we can do some tests on this and see what happens when we try and pass some current through this thing. What we should see is it should pass a lot of current and then all of a sudden not pass any current and it should get hot as we do that. We'll also do some quick tests on this capacitor just to see if this thing's, you know, showing some capacitance or showing resistance or anything like that. Okay, so we have our test set up here. I just have a couple test leads. So first I have it set to resistance. So I'm gonna connect it to this little pad right here and we're gonna see what kind of resistance we measure with this. 31.6 ohms right now and that's with no load across the device. So it seems like a pretty high resistance for, for uh, it being cold. Let's check if our capacitor has any resistance. We'd expect this number to count up and eventually just overload. And it looks like it's counting up. We're up in the mega ohms already. So this is continuing to count up. That's a good thing for a capacitor. Um, we can change the mode over to a capacitor test mode and see what we get for a capacitance on this thing. I mean, it's saying 0.44 nanofarad, which would, <laughs> that would definitely be wrong. Let's try a different meter, see if we get something different. 0.4 nanofarad. That's just not gonna start a motor. That's not good. A capacitor should never have falling resistance. So that is telling us that something's gone very, very wrong with this capacitor. I'm just gonna pull in a, a you know, random capacitor, you know, around a, a couple microfarads, and we'll just hook this up and see, see how the performance is different. So, right to overload. So this thing can't even measure the resistance of this capacitor because it's so high and it went right to that very quickly. So that's a good sign. It's telling us this capacitor is functional. Let's go to the capacitance and see 2.24 microfarads right on, right on what it's supposed to be. And it got there really quickly. So, so it tells us with confidence that this capacitor, this actual capacitor is the component that failed. Power supply is on. So what we want to see is if we connect this across this disc, we want to see if this voltage, well, what we should see is this voltage should initially drop, but then it should climb back up. It'll also be interesting to see how that thing looks on a thermal camera. So we're drawing about one amp right now. What I'm expecting to see is the voltage start to drop. Sorry, not the voltage, the current drop. And take a look at that. The current dropped right down to a point, almost zero amps now. And what we should see is this thing's hot. And there it is, you can see we're about 100, 106, 107 degrees C. So if we cool that back off, we should see a high current. And we'll watch that again. So what we're gonna to wanna to take a look at is this over here. The current's gonna be high, and then it's gonna fall low. Let's do it again. 
see if it works. So watch the current on the meter over there. So we're one amp, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.09, 0 0.05. You can see as we heat this thing up, it just drops right down to nothing and then it just maintains that value. So if we leave this connected all the time, it's gonna draw almost no current at all because it just has to maintain that high temperature. What you can do with just, you know, a few milliamps. Then we take a look at it again with the thermal camera and we can see it's back up over 100 degrees C. So that's the basic principle of operation for this thing. It's a thermal relay. When you initially connect it, this is cold. When this thing is cold, there's a short circuit effectively to this thing. And we saw it was only about 30 something ohms. So it's not like a dead short circuit, but it's a pretty low value. And then after just a very short period of time, you see that this thing gets hot and then the current that's allowed to flow through it drops way lower. And therefore, this capacitor is effectively out of circuit at that point. The resistance of this becomes very high. And we can see that this has some thermal mass to it. So if you were to disconnect the unit and then reconnect the unit real quick, it wouldn't start the compressor because this thing has to cool back down before it would start up again. All right, so we're gonna have to use some Ohm's law to calculate this because I can't measure the resistance because as soon as you disconnect it, it cools off and therefore doesn't work correctly. Right now we're looking at about 72 milliamps with a 27.1 volt drop across the device. So we can calculate its resistance with those two values. All right, so if we do the math on that, 27 volts divided by 70 milliamps or 0 0.07 amps gives us about 386 ohms. So that's what it pops up to at the top value. And when it's cold, we see a much lower resistance than that. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get a good reading on that cold resistance. Scrape the label off so we can see some information about this thing. We can see it's about a 45 to 52 microfarad capacitor. And we can see it's rated for 220 VAC. So right out of the box, they're overloading this thing. That's not great. And uh, they're, they're putting right on their label 277 volts AC. They're underrating this capacitor voltage wise. So probably a good reason why it would fail is it probably slowly just breaks down over time and eventually lets out, uh, lets out some electrolyte and eventually turns into uh, just a dry capacitor. We'll take a look at the calculations for the reactants and see how much this thing could provide to start a compressor. Here's some calculations comparing a good capacitor and a bad capacitor. The bad capacitor has a very low rating and what that means is the minimum reactants isn't very high so we don't have enough current to actually make the compressor kick on or turn. With our good capacitor we can see we have a much higher value which means our reactance is very low and we can see we get about five and a half amps of current flowing through this capacitor which gives us 1250 extra VA to start our compressor. Once that PTC heats up you can see this drops down to about 19. When the compressor is running the capacitor is effectively out of circuit. Just a few milliamps of current are running through it. But when it starts up and that PTC is cold, we have a high current and a lot of VA running through, which is enough to push the compressor into rotation. So this little device, as it gets hotter, the resistance gets higher and therefore it disconnects the capacitor, which is totally cooked. The little valve hasn't popped, but it's it's certainly well beyond its uh, rated value, you know, measuring 40 nanofarads for something that's probably in the hundreds of microfarads. So it's something to look into if you ever have an air conditioning product that's not working correctly. The culprit could very well be the starting capacitor. Um, if you're not seeing overpressure or underpressure, um, if it seems like it's just not able to start the compressor and it's not a locked rotor or an oil problem or some other thing, the capacitor is a good place to check. And uh, in this case, this capacitor was the starting capacitor. So the compressor and the running capacitor are both in good condition. It's just this starting capacitor that wasn't working. And without this, the compressor just would not go under any circumstances. It's a very inexpensive part as well. So if you are running into a problem, this is a really cheap way to, to get a repair done. As always with something like this, this is using mains voltage. So, you know, know what you're doing before you do it. If you don't, call someone. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to the video if you want to see some more content like this. Let me know in the comments. And uh, I, um, I have a whole bunch more content coming out that's going to be covering a whole different span of fields. Mostly a lot of power adapters because I have a lot of those to uh, run through a test protocol. So we'll be doing a whole bunch of those just for, for fun. So that's it for our little HVAC starting capacitor.